All right, guys, our next guest is one of the UFC's most polarizing characters, the interim welterweight champion and the first ever UFC champion to be invited to the White House, the great American winning machine himself, Colby Covington. Welcome back to Submission Radio. How are you today? It's great to have you back on the program. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys having me back. It's always a good time to chat with my Australian buddies from down under. That's it, man. That's it. And uh, this is actually the first time that we've gotten the belt the MAGA hat, and the glasses all at the same time. I think normally we chat to you after practice, so you're still in your practice gear, but now we get in the full treatment. So thank you very much, Colby. Uh, last time, you were kind enough to join us when we spoke pretty much right after your meeting with Dana White, your impromptu meeting with Dana White in Las Vegas. Now, things seem a lot better. As it stands, what is the latest update as far as you fighting Kamara Usman? Yeah, I, we're just waiting on him to stop faking injuries. He's trying to extend this ass whooping. He's trying to hold on to his number one contendership belt as long as he can. So, you know, we're just waiting for him to stop faking injuries and making up all these different excuses why he wants to push the date back. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Mm. I know you spoke to us about potentially fighting in June and July, but it looks like those cards are filling up, especially UFC 239. Chicago looks pretty filled up. Do you think August is likely to be the month that uh, the fight comes together depending on Usman's recovery from surgery? Uh, yeah, it's looking like August. I, I wanted June in Chicago. I wanted to go back to Chicago, make the Chicago, you know, the United Center great again. I did that last year and won this title, and it would be no better way to go back there and defend it in the same place that the basketball goat Michael Jordan used to play. So that's where mm. greatness is at. So it's too bad that I can't go back there and, and show them greatness. But, you know, uh, we got Usman out here faking all these injuries. After the fight, he said it was his foot, and then he said it was his knee, and then now all of a sudden it's his double hernia bullshit. So he's just following the same plan as Ty Quill Woodley. That's what Woodley used to do too, man. He, he'd make up all these fake surgeries. Oh, my shoulder. Oh, I'm good to fight a money fight, but oh, my shoulder, my hand, this, that. So, yeah, it's looking like August. It's, it's a bunch of bullshit and, and politics going on, but, you know, I'm willing to wait, and I'm only getting better every single day, so it's only getting worse for Snoozman. Yeah, I was going to say, does this sort of benefit you in any way? And what is it like in terms of trying to plan, uh, I guess, and organize your life? Because in an ideal world, you'd sort of be already sort of in training camp preparing for June. But now that the fight, you know, may be sort of a little bit later than sooner, what do you sort of do in the meantime? Do you, do you start camp a little bit early? Do you just keep going to practice? Uh, yeah, you keep work. you know, you keep going, you keep working, you know. Uh, the thing is, I'm working every single day. You know, I'm in the bedroom doing my porn star cardio. So, you know, I'm always building that endurance and that cardio up every single day. So, you know, I get better every single day, you know. But since I don't want to get hurt, you know, I want to stay healthy before the fight. I, you know, I'm probably going to take some vacations, maybe go overseas, see what the Latin chicks are over there, maybe go to Europe, you know, check out that place. So, you know, i got a lot of things on the agenda. I'm going to be waiting a while until August or September. Mm. It's interesting because uh, obviously the big fight was you and Woodley. What's it feel like now that Woodley's done? He's no longer champion and you've really built up that fight and now it doesn't really look like it's ever going to happen. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, I told Tyquil Woodley, don't fuck it up. You know, all he had to do was wait three weeks for me the first time, but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to dictate the terms and, and, and when he wanted to fight, not when... You know, we were both ready to fight. He was faking injuries, and then I had a fight, and he was trying to get me on a sh short camp. So it's unfortunate, man. It's a built-up fight. It was the biggest blockbuster fight at welterweight. You know, I've been calling that fight for two, three years now, and it, and it sucks. It's not going to happen. There was such a feud there, being old training partners in American Top Team. And, you know, just the political angle, He, you know, he's a, he's a liberal snowflake. He's a soy boy. Uh, you know, I'm a MAGA. I'm the great American winning machine. So there's a lot of different angles that could, fight could have went. And it's too bad it'll never happen. Mm, now that it looks like you guys won't fight, how do you feel about him? Do you still have ill will towards him? Or is it something that's behind you now? Uh, yeah, it's something that's behind me. You know, it's going to – I'll enjoy him being my gatekeeper of my division <laughs> and, you know, just sitting on the outside, you know, wishing he had what I want and beg for me, you know. The tables are turned now, man. It's it's too bad, you know, but he's over the hill. His time has come and gone. He's at the end of the road, and, and you know, it's, it's time for me, man. It's my time now. No one's going to stop me right now. Just wondering, because you spent so much time sort of analyzing Woodley, and, and now you've got Usman in front of you, who do you think is the tougher matchup stylistically for you, Colby? Uh, stylistically, they're both pretty easy matchups for me. 
You know, the thing about Woodley that I was saying for the last two years is that he has no cardio. You just got to push him and, and get his heart rate up, and then, you know, he sucks. He's like an amateur out there. So, you know, Woodley has an easy game plan, and and, and Snoozeman has – he's even easier because he's already emotional. He's already – thinking irrationally, doing stupid-ass shit, trying to attack me in the Palms Buffet line, you know, doing bullshit. And he's just going to come out and get himself knocked out. So, you know, they're both easy matchups, man. It's a great time to be Colby Chaos Covington because there's not a lot of hard matchups out there for me. <laughs> well, talk to us about this Buffet line since since you've mentioned it because that was pretty wild. We saw the footage. You've discussed it since, but how do you feel about the altercation now that it's happened, you know, a few weeks ago? Ali was involved. Usman was involved. A lot of people believe that Ali was sort of out of line for trying to attack you. How do you feel about that situation? It's pretty wild. You don't see that very often, especially from a champion. Yeah, it's embarrassing. You know, the, the night before, he's trying to act like this good guy. And, and then all of a sudden, the next day, he's trying to act like a street thug, trying to attack me, put innocent you know, kids and innocent pregnant lady and other older ladies in the, in the Palms Buffet line put their lives in danger. You know, like we're professional fighters, dude. We're not street thugs, dude. If you want these hands thrown, you're going to have to catch it on high definition on pay-per-view. So we get paid large sums of money to, to fight in that octagon. And we're going to fight in the octagon. That's what I told them before. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I'm going to beat your ass in the octagon. Just save it for that. But, you know, I think it was all rooted. You know, this is an Ali Abdella Sleaze move. He wanted me to, you know, throw a punch on Usman or throw a punch on him and lose my title shot, man. They, they fear me. They know what's ahead of them now. And he doesn't want to lose one of his meal tickets. And that's what's about to happen. I'm about to break one of his meal tickets. And then the next one in Russia is next. Mm, it's interesting that you mention that because Ali has been saying that he thinks Masvidal should be next for a title sh shot instead of you. I mean, obviously, you're best mates with Masvidal. What do you make of Ali sort of trying to push you out of the title picture? Uh, I could give a fuck less what Ali Abdel Sleeves wants. He's not the matchmaker. He doesn't make the fucking fights. Dana White makes the fights, and Dana White already said, I'm fucking next. So who gives a fuck with that bum? Why are you giving that terrorist rat? Why are you even listening to anything he says? He just spits out fake news after fake news. Why would you even listen to anything he says? I, I was wondering, Colby, you know, the, the way that that altercation went down, you mentioned that there were sort of innocent people around. Did you ever sort of consider maybe pressing charges against Ali, you know, given given how, I guess, crazy and, and I guess, out of line it was? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't think about that, you know. I, I think what's going to be more rewarding is just smashing Snoozeman, putting him out unconscious and just laughing over at uh, Abdel Sleeves, you know. He's going to get what's coming to him, man. He's a little terrorist rat. He's already got enough people. He's an FBI informant. He's already got enough people on his on his hate list that, that are going to take care of him. Karma's going to come to him. I promise you that. He's going to get karma. But by the way, just before you said that you want to take care of Usman and then the next one's in Russia, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to Ali's clients. What, what exactly did you mean by that? Who are you targeting Russia? Are you, are you going after Khabib? Yeah, I mean, I just it's an easy fight. And he's already been asking to fight uh, GSP in, in between welterweight and lightweight. And I can make him between welterweight and lightweight because I'm not a big welterweight. So... You know, it's going to be more rewarding to, to smash two of uh, Ali's biggest clients and, and just leave him crying, dude. He's already emotional. You saw how emotional he was the last fight. So taking down mm. two of his clients and meal tickets is, is going to be a sweet feeling. Uh, you discussed who was tougher between Usman and Woodley. Where does Khabib rank in that discussion? If you look at all three of them, would you, would you say he would be your biggest challenge? How do you rate him? Oh, man, he would be my easiest challenge. He's small, and he, he doesn't even do what I do as good as I do it. You know, he can't wrestle as good as me. He's he's never faced a high-level Division One All-American, a kid who's been wrestling his whole life. That Sambo shit, that shit's weak, man. If if wrestling were easy, it would call it would be called Sambo, but it's not. <laughs> it's called wrestling. But by the way, i got to ask, while we're sort of talking about, you know, the Palms incident and altercations, what did you think of your, ba your boy, Jorge Masvidal, and the situation that he had with Leon Edwards over in UFC London, and the way that he now inf infamously, much to the love of the fans, gave him a three-piece in a soda? Uh, you know, I'm just worried about Marty Snoozman right now. I I'm not worried about anybody else. I'm just I'm just worried about Marty Snoozman, you know. Have you, did you hear him on Joe Rogan? He was talking about uh, he was trying to talk about building a wall and 
illegal immigrants. He doesn't even know the difference between illegal and legal immigrants. He's like, oh, I'm doing this for all the wrath of the immigrants. I'm going to beat Colby's ass for the wrath of the immigrants. He's like, dude, what are you talking about, dude? I'm America's champion. If, if you're talking about legal immigrants, all the legal immigrants love me. They they love what I'm doing. I'm 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 the, literally the American dream. And, but he doesn't know what he's fucking talking about. He's man. He's just spewing all this fake news. How can you? Has not has anybody not realized how boring he is and just how lame he just makes up shit that Ali gives to him? You know, I have to say, Colby, sort of, you've always been a polarizing figure, but I have noticed just from sort of YouTube comments and Twitter comments, I almost feel like the tide is turning. There's a lot of people saying, I didn't know about Colby in the beginning, but, you know, I'm really starting to come around. I'm really starting to like him. You know, he's funny and this and that. I, I feel like there's, I guess, a lot more people behind you these days. Are you are you noticing that sort of change? Are you noticing, I guess, a lot of the new, uh, I, I guess, followers and fans that you're getting? Uh, no, you know, I don't pay attention to that. You know, I, my fans, I've always, you know, they, they know how I please them. I please them by, you know, entertaining them day in and day out, not just when I fight. I, I entertain them when I go out there and I keep getting my hand raised and, and I keep winning for America. So the only thing I see is red, white, and blue and occasionally green when it goes into my bank account. <laughs> um, I was going to say just also on Usman, you, you mentioned before sort of, uh, I guess some of the things that he's been saying, he said that you are the first person that he's ever had ill will towards. How do you sort of take that? Do you, do you sort of feel like you've, in this short amount of time, been able to get into his head? Do, do you think that's potentially an advantage for you? Oh, uh, there's no doubt about it. It's an advantage. You know, he's already thinking, speaking, and and acting emotionally. You know, I I, I don't speak. I don't I don't have emotions, man. If, if you guys know me and know what I'm all about, it's that I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I say how I feel. And I, and I talk the talk and I walk the walk. So, you know, this isn't the feelings business. This is the fight business. And I'm also not, you know, a lot of these guys, they're just trying to make friends with everybody in the UFC. It should be called the Ultimate Friends Championship because that's what everybody's trying to do. I'm here to do business. I'm here to make money. And next on my play, I'm here to punch a hole in motherfucking Marty Snoozman's face. <laughs> uh, I know it's not something you really want to talk about. Just quickly, because we have to clear it up, Colby. A lot of fans are just wondering... When it comes to Masvidal, he looks like he's fighting Ben Askren next. What's the situation there if he does become the number one contender and you become champion? Have you guys at least discussed it between yourself as to what you would do in that situation? We've seen Daniel Cormier and Cain Velasquez figure these situations out before. Would it be a similar situation? Um, you know, the thing is, is you can't look so far ahead. You know, I'm, far, I'm focused on Marty Snoozman. He's focused on Ben Askren. So... <laughs> You know, that's that's what's what's ahead of us. You know, there's there's really not much to talk about in, in this and that and all this and that, you know, the scenario after this scenario. All you can and focus on is what's ahead of you. And what's ahead of me right now is Marty Snoozman. What's ahead of him is Ben Askren. Mm, and just speaking on Ben, how do you think the fight between him and Ben would go down if it does happen? Uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting fight. You know, Ben Askren, he obviously showed that you know, he doesn't know how to take a punch and he can't punch. So if he can get George to the ground, then then it's going to be a long night for him. And if not, then, you know, it's going to be a long night the other way around. I, I honestly, I don't know, man. It's the, it's a, it's a pick em fight. I was going to say just on Jorge, I, I don't know if you, if you want to sort of telling this, but there, for, for people who, who haven't seen, there is an excellent uh, vlog with you and Jorge, you guys just hanging out. It's called tales from the grind. It's, it's almost famous on, on Reddit. And sort of just going off this Leon Edwards situation, have you ever had any crazy situations like that with Jorge Masvidal when you guys were hanging out in Miami and, I don't know, he, he maybe gave someone else a three-piece in a soda? Do you have any stories like that by any chance, Colby? Nah, man, I don't got any stories about that. Sorry, man. The only stories I got, like, I got a good story when I was at the White House with the President of the United States, Mr. Donald Trump. He was just telling me about how much he loves pro wrestling since it is WrestleMania weekend. And yes. I'm going to be going to the W I'm going to be going to the WWE soon. You know, we might as well tell you this about how Trump was talking about his hair versus hair match versus Vince McMahon. Yeah. What a great time. Wow. Did he say anything crazy about it? We remember that moment. It was pretty wild. Who, yeah. who could believe that would be the president of the United States? Did he give you any sort of sneaky backstage information that none of us knew about? Uh, he was just, you know, he was telling me just funny story how, you know, he, he couldn't trust Vince McMahon and he almost thought that, that Vince was even going to, even though Vince was supposed to, to lose, he was he was thinking he was going to 
pr- play a prank on him, you know, an April Fool's joke and and make him win and shave uh, Trump's head. So huh. when he told <laughs> me that, it, you know, it was pretty funny. Yeah, unbelievable. Speaking of the WWE, because we did want to get your thoughts on a couple of things. You mentioned that you'd like to go there one day. Did you see the story that John Oliver did on, on his program about the mistreatment of wrestlers, how they're classed as independent contractors? And did you, if you did see that, did you see some of the parallels between the UFC and the WWE? Because there's a lot of similar, similar things that he pointed out between the WWE and the UFC where people are mistreated and it's a similar situation. Yeah, but... I mean, I, I did see a little bit of it, and I heard little little clips of it, but, you mm. know, you can't even compare the two. I mean, WWE, they're, they're not making $10,000 paychecks. Those guys are all getting paid, man. They're all making at least five hundred k plus a year minimum. Like, most most of them are making multi-millions a year, and with their T-shirt deals, they're making even more. So, And I'm pretty sure all those guys get health insurance and retirement benefits. We don't get none of that shit in the UFC. We don't get no we don't get no health care unless we're fighting, you know, like if we're just we're in training camp. And like last time I was in training camp and I broke my hand, I had to pay for that out of pocket, you know, like that. That wouldn't happen in WWE. So, you know, those guys, they, they don't even compare. There's no parallel to it, man. The UFC, we get paid like dog shit. It's pennies over here. And and, uh, you know, I just if he has no idea, man, he, if he came and looked into the books and, and and really did some research into the UFC, man, <laughs> there's no parallel everybody's getting taken advantage of in the UFC. Mm. I mean, if he watches this, would you put your hand up to give him some of that information? If he does another special, would you give him some of that information to focus on the UFC? Because I think it's something that's opening eyes to a lot of fans all over the world. A lot of WWE people are outraged. And now a lot of people are saying, oh, it's time for the UFC to have a special done on them as well. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm, I'm the right guy for it, you know, like, Obviously, I speak my mind and I say how I feel, you know, and I'm also not scared to lose my job, man. That's how what some of these guys, they're so scared to lose their job. Obviously, I, I stood up to the UFC brass. I stood up to Dana White. I didn't give a fuck, dude. I was willing to lose my job. So, yeah, definitely I'll speak to the guy and speak truth. And that if fans are starting to come around and like me more, they're starting to see all the truth I speak and, and how I speak stuff into existence and how I believe in the power of, of manifestation, you know, that the people can get behind that because I'm real. So... You know, I'm, I'll definitely, I would love to talk to him. I, well, I think that the the situation that you had with Dana White and butting heads with the UFC, I think that was almost like a, a Stone Cold Steve Austin going up against Vince McMahon <laughs> back in the day where, you know, people people could sort of relate to that. But just in, in light of that situation, you and the UFC butting heads, what did you think of Conor McGregor's recent, you know, retirement? And I use quotation marks in his retirement because it seems like he's negotiating with the UFC. It seems like he's not happy with maybe... Uh, some of the money that he'll be making from fights because of this ESPN pay-per-view deal. And it seems like, you know, they, they may or may not be willing to give him what he wants. What, what did you think of that? And that kind of, I guess, negotiating. See, it, it seems, I don't want to say the same, but something similar to what you went through recently with the UFC. I think that guy has bigger problems ahead of him. You know, he's his world's coming apart, man. Look at the Brooklyn incident. Look at him taking this fan's phone in Miami. And then all of a sudden, now there's a sexual... Uh, assault charge against him in Dublin, Ireland, and he's like, he's he's fled the country because he doesn't want to have to talk to authorities and go to jail. So I think that guy's got bigger problems ahead of him, and you know he's retired now. So I don't even know why we're still talking about him. Well, you mentioned the WWE before, so we want to quickly get your thoughts on this WrestleMania weekend. Will you be there first of all? And has anybody? Are there any plans to go over there and watch it live? I mean, you'll just have to tune in and see. You know, chaos is unpredictable. I can't be giving you guys any spoilers. You know, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking megaphone. I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. uh, ringside. You know, I'm thinking jumping in there when you know Triple H goes out or whatever's going to happen. That's that's what would what would work. I mean, you've mentioned that you've you, you've had plans of going over to the WWE. Ha, have you heard much from them? Has anybody been in touch with you about possibly doing something with them? Oh, uh, you know. We, we got a good connection over there because our, you know, my teammate, Bobby Lashley, and his agent, who's also my agent, Dan Lambert, Mr. Dan Lambert, who owns American Top Team, you know, he keeps in touch with them and, and they definitely know who I am and, and see what I'm doing. And most of them, even like Paul Heyman was like, man, Colby, you're doing pro wrestling better than pro wrestling's doing this. So, <laughs> you know, we have some connections over there. We're talking, you know, and, and obviously Ronda Rousey, I got a lot of love for her. She's one of my friends and. And uh, so I might be there supporting her and, and my teammate Bobby Lashley this weekend. 
That would be incredible. I remember you said you weren't going to be in Vegas when we spoke to you last, and then days later you pop up in Vegas at the fight. So I wouldn't be surprised. You mentioned Paul Heyman. When 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 did he say this? Have you have you spoken at length with Paul Heyman? What what was that like? Oh man, it was, it was really good. Yeah, I got to speak at length with uh, Paul Heyman a couple months ago, like two months ago, three months ago when. Uh, uh, WWE was there for Monday Night Raw. They were in Miami at American Airlines Arena, and I went backstage, got to chat with with him a little bit, and saw Brock Lesnar. He gave me a pound. And was like, "Keep it up, man. Love what wow. you're doing, champ." Yeah, and then uh, Paul would just give me, you know, he was just telling me some tips, man, and, and this and that. And he was like, "Man, you're you're perfect for pro wrestling. I love what you're doing, and uh, keep up the hard work. You know, the power of the promo is real." Incredible from from Paul Heyman himself and a fist bump from uh, from Brock Lesnar. What did Brock say about this DC fight? Uh, I didn't get to talk with him about that, but hmm. uh, I mean, I, I I don't know. I I don't think it's gonna happen, man. I think that uh, he's 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 happy over at WWE. You know, he's a little bit older, so you know he's killing it over in WWE. No one can stop that guy. That guy's a fucking beast. So you know, I just I don't I don't know. I don't think it's gonna happen in the UFC. Mm. Well, as we wrap up, we have to find this one out because everybody's gearing up for WrestleMania. What is your favorite WrestleMania of all time? Do you have one that sticks out in your mind? Colby, what you think back to, and for me, by, it was WrestleMania 17, The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. They had that crazy TLC match. I think for a lot of people, that was pretty spectacular. But for you, is there a WrestleMania that stands out in mind that's a favorite? Yeah, I would, I would say that one. As a kid, that was the one that I loved, but... You know, the thing about WrestleMania that's so exciting, man, is like I, I heard some UFC complain UFC fighters complaining to me, Oh, Colby's making this too WWE. Oh, it's WWE. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? You wish this shit was WWE. Have you not seen the fucking how WrestleMania sells out eighty thousand seat arenas? Like, motherfuckers, if you guys were putting in that much money into the pay per views, selling out arenas like that, you'd be getting paid astronomical numbers. So you wish this fucking UFC was WWE. There you go, guys. I, I, I'm personally looking forward to WrestleMania 35, uh, not only for the matches, but to actually see if you'll be there, Colby. I think that's going to be a nice, funny, uh, a nice, a nice, fun Easter egg in of itself. Always appreciate you coming on the show, Colby. Always appreciate chatting with you. Follow the man on Twitter and Instagram at Colby Cove MMA. We used to plug your T-shirts, but I, I don't know if you're doing any anymore. Are there any T-shirts going on sale? Are there any T-shirts that fans can buy, Colby? I know you still used, used to have Nerd Bash 2019. What what's sort of uh, on for the fans at the moment? Yeah, I actually just got my store up today. It's over at ProWrestlingTees.com. I got my store up. I got I got some sweet sweet different designs, like three or four cool designs in it. So we're gonna get more designs out there and. And uh, definitely go check those out at ProWrestlingTees.com. And, uh, and uh, the future's bright, man. If, if you wear a Colby shirt, just be realize that no snowflake is safe and, and people are going to have feelings around you. There you go, guys. ProWrestlingTees.com. Again, thank you so much, Colby. Always appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.